The inherited widget allows you to keep your state of your application at one location. The state which the inherited widget holds can be accessed by all the child widgets, so all the widgets which are here displayed in the green color. If you don't use the inherited widget, then you normally use stateful widgets. So let's say this is a stateful widget and it contains some state and you want to have also the state on this location. What you would normally do is you would bring the state which you have here inside and bring it up to this widget so that both widgets here on the left and the right side can have access to this state. However, let's say there is again another widget which also wants to have this state. Then you need to change your structure again and you need to put this state here again to another location so that also this widget here can get access to it. And like you can see in big applications, this approach of stateful widgets doesn't make sense because it is too complicated. And what you can do therefore is to use this inherited widget with which you can then access the state at any location of your app. If you are new here, subscribe to my channel and make sure to watch this video till the end. We want to build an application where you can share your application state to different widgets or different pages. So in this case, we want to share here this color, which you see here in the background and also this counter. And you can see that we have here different pages and they can then change, for example, the color and everything is managed then over this inherited widget. So we don't have many stateful widgets. Instead, we have one inherited widget at the top and this has an all our application state. I have already here this app with two buttons where we can basically go to a page where we can change later our counter. And we also have here another button where we can later change our color. Now let's get started. I have already created here the state widget and here inside we want to create our inherited widget. So we simply extend here from the inherited widget and then we can put here the state inside which needs to be accessed within our application. So for example, a counter variable and then you create a constructor and put here a child widget inside and also this counter can be initialized. After it, you put here the supper inside where you also put the child widget inside. And now comes the important part to call this update should notify method. And here every time if our state changes, then we return here true. And if it is not changed, then we return here false. And therefore we have the access to the old data and the new data. And we simply compare here the old data to the new data and if it is not equals then it has changed and returns here true and then it will update our UI. This is the basic implementation of the inherited widget which simply contains some state which then is later distributed to the whole application. To access this counter state we need to create a new method which is called off and here we need to put the context inside and we return here then the counter state. And how we get this counter state is by calling here context and dependent on inherited widget of exact type. And here we put basically this state inherited widget inside. So what is happening here is pretty simple. So let's say this widget here wants to have access to this state. What it does is simply to call this method here off and puts here his context inside. And then the context allows to search here for this state inherited widget. So simply it will look up here the widget tree from this location and go then to this location. Is this an inherited widget? No. Is this an inherited widget? Yes. And this is simply what we are doing. We are looking here within our widget tree for this state inherited widget, which is one of the parent widgets. And now we have here access to this state inherited widget and we need to call then the counter to return here our counter variable. Now we can make use of this state inherited widget so that all the widgets in our application can access here our state, our counter variable. Therefore you simply copy this here and go to your main file and then you wrap this material app inside of this inherited widget. So I simply put it here around our inherited widget, which we have created. And here inside you can then pass our counter variable and initially it has a counter of zero. However, you can also change this value. So let's maybe put here five inside. 
And now all the widgets below the state inherited widget can then access our counter state. And therefore they simply call the state inherited widget. So let's say we go here down to this actual counter, which is displayed here in our text widget. So let's replace this counter here. And therefore we simply call here this state inherited widget. And here we call our method off, which we have created before. And here we get then access to our state to our counter. So I simply put it here to a new variable, which is called counter. And this is what we can then put here inside. And now if I hot reload, you see we have here the five because we have put it here as an initial value inside. And if we would change it, then we also have here this different value. And the advantage now is that the state of our application is stored at one location at the top of our app and all the widgets below can simply access it and then you don't need to pass the state down the widget tree like you did maybe before with stateful widgets. So for example, if let's say the counter page also wants to have access to this counter variable, then they simply call also here this inherited widget and then they also have access to this counter variable. All right, now we have learned how we can access the state and you can also put your multiple fields inside if you like. So you can put here some other field inside, let's say a name or something, which you pass here also down the widget tree. And this is pretty cool. However, we also want to change our state and this is what we want to look at right now. To do this, you simply create here on top a stateful widget and within our build method, we simply call here the state inherited widget and here we also want to pass the child inside. So we simply create here at the top a field child and also call here our constructor child. And now we simply replace this widget here within our main file, which we had before with this state widget. So we don't have here this state inherited widget. We put here the state widget instead inside and we also remove here our counter. So basically we have now our inherited widget wrapped around the state widget and the state widget is responsible for doing the update because the inherited widget is immutable. So we have here always a final in front, so it cannot change its state. However, on top of it, we simply put here the stateful widget inside and a stateful widget can change its state. So what we are doing here is we create a new field, which is our state, in this case, the counter, and we pass it down to our state inherited widget, which is then responsible for simply distributing this state here down to all the widgets in our widget tree. And the state widget is now responsible for updating our state. And therefore we simply create here a new method to update our state. So let's create an increment counter method. And here inside we simply update our counter and increment it by one. And the important thing is to also call here the set state because the set state will update our UI and it will care therefore that this here gets updated so that this state inherited widget gets here the new counter and this counter will then be updated if this condition is true. So if it is a different counter, then our whole UI gets updated and this is what the inherited widget cares for, that it is then distributed to the right widgets. So let's also try this example out. So we want to go here to this other page and here we have a button called increment counter and this is what we want to call here this method from this page. To get here access to this method, we simply do the same trick again. So we call here this off method. However, this only returns here our counter. However, we want to have access to this state here and therefore we want to pass the state here inside of our state inherited widget so that we have it here inside and then we can also have here access to our state itself within our other widgets below. So let's do this. So we simply put here our current state inside of another field which is then also distributed to the whole application and therefore we also create here another field, the state widget, which is exactly of this type here. And we also create our constructor. And now what happens here, instead of returning here our counter, we want to return here our state widget state. So I simply call here the state widget, 
and we also return here our state widget state instead. Now we have to do some update in our main file because here we made use of our inherited widget, which is this counter here. And here to access the counter, we also need to call this time counter because here this off returns the state widget, which is exactly this widget. And here we also want to have access to the counter variable. Now let's implement the logic for our button if we click here that it should update. So we simply copy this here and then we go to our counter page, which is this page here. And here we go down to our increment counter method, which is for this button here. If we click on it, then this is executed. And here within our increment counter method, we call then our inherited widget, which gives us then the state. And here we simply call then on the state, the increment counter method. So we have here access to this method and this will then update our state which is then here going again inside, inside of our inherited widget. And then everything is distributed with this inherited widget again to the whole application. So let's try it out. So initially we have the counter at zero. I click here, change counter. We click on increment counter and you see it is updated. And I can also do here more updates like you can see. Now we want to go on and also have another page where we can change the color. And this color, we also want to store here within our state. And how you could do it now, you could cr simply create here another field, which is called color. And then you also need to pass it here down to the inherited widget. And here you create again another field color and so on. However, this is not really practical. Let's say you have 10 fields which you want to add, then you always need to add it here at this location and also at this location. And therefore we want to do here something different. What we want to do is we simply create a new model object, which is our core state of our whole application. And here we simply create a counter variable like what we had before. And we also create here this color, which we added right now. And now we simply take this core state and go again to our state widget. And here we simply go to our state level of our stateful widget and we replace here this counter with our state. And then we create here our new core state and this has then our counter inside and our color. And to our inherited widget, we simply put then here our state instead of the counter because our state contains both of these fields. And we also replace our counter with the state and also here in our constructor. Here at the bottom, we also need to change our counters to state. And here every time if the state is not equals, then we want to update our state. And because this comparison here is not supported by default for objects, we need to add it here to our core state. So we simply create here an equals method and a hash code method. And here within our equals method, we basically compare the counter with another object counter and look if they are the same. And then we return here true. And we also do this for all the other fields which we have here in our state. Let's go again to our stateful widget here, to our state widget. And here we also need to update our increment counter because we don't have here our counter variable anymore at the state level. To update our state with the new counter, we simply create here a new counter where we access our current state counter and increment it by one. So this is exactly what we did here at the bottom. And then we also want to create here a new state instance. And this is what we do with this copy method, which we want to create. And here we put simply our new counter inside. Now let's go inside of our core state and let's create here the copy method. And then you create here a new core instance and here go all the fields of our state also inside. So the counter and also the background color. And this state.copy is simply taking our current state, which is this core state with this field of zero and colors.green. And now we simply put here a new counter, for example, inside. So he will only update the counter and the state of our background color will stay the same. And this is basically what we are doing here. So we only update the counter and not the background color. And now instead of this updating of the counter, we simply update our state. So we get here the new state and put it inside of our 
field here at the state level. Let's also go here to our main and you see we have here again the problem because this time we cannot access here our counter anymore. So we need to call here state and then we have our counter. And now we did a lot of things. However, we have now the advantage that we also can change here the background color and also can access here the background color within our whole application. So here on this page, if we click on one of these colors, then the background color of our app should change. And how we do this is by simply going to our state widget again. And here next to the increment counter method, we create another method called set color. And here we can then put the color inside, which we later select. And here we simply call again a new copy of our state. And this time we only want to change here the background color and put here the background color inside, which we later get here from this page. And finally, we do like before, we update our state. So we simply put here the new state inside of our state. And now let's go here to our color page. And here we have all the buttons, red, orange, and so on. And here inside of this build color button method, we have this on press handler. And every time if we click here on one of these, then this is executed. Here inside, we want to have then access to the method which we created before. So we call here our inherited widget and the off. And then we have here access to this method which we have created. And inside of it, we simply put here the color of this button inside. So if we click on this button, then we simply put here the red color inside. All right, now the update of our color should work. So if we click here, then it should be here updated in our core state. So basically this here gets updated with the new color. However, now we also need to display this color within our app. Therefore, we go to the main file and here at the top, we have the scene data where we simply can supply the background color of our scaffolds. And therefore you have here a field which is called scaffold background color. And then we simply put here the color inside and we want to get access to our state, which has then our background color. To get here access to the state, we need to call again our state inherited widget of context. And here we always put a context inside. However, this time we cannot do this because here we would use this context and this context here doesn't know the state widget yet because this was defined before this child widget here. And therefore what we need to do is to put here in between this material app and the state widget a builder method. So simply wrap it here inside of a builder and this builder has then this context and this context can then access this state widget. If you want to have more information about this context, I have already created another video, which I will link in the description box of this video here. Here inside we call now state inherited widget off like before, and then we get here access to our state, which we then use to display here our background color. And now if I hot restart, you see we have here already this green color. And this is because we have here initially our green color inside. And this will be then every time changed if we click here on change color and choose a different color. So here we simply can now change it and then the core state will always be updated. Within our counter page, we also have here a field where we simply can type some number and then we can update our counter. And this is what we want to implement here at the end. If you want to get here access to this whole source code, you can get it with the first link in the description. And with the second link, you can get access to my Flutter course where I teach you how you can become a better and more efficient Flutter developer. Now let's go on and create here within our state widget a new method. And this time we call it set counter. And here inside we simply create a new counter. So this time we get it from the outside world. So actually this widget here will have then the new number, which it then put here inside of this method. And we then simply update here our state only with the counter. And we also put again the new state inside of our state here. Now let's go to this update counter button. So we simply go here to our counter page and here we have exactly this set counter method. And here we need to call our method. So simply copy this one, for example, 
and put it here below inside. And this time we simply call here the other method. So we call our counter and this is another variable which we want to create because here we get a string and we want to transfer it to an integer. Therefore I simply put here this value, our string to an integer and this is what we then pass to our set counter method. In case that this value is not an integer, we also want to put here a catch around so that we simply catch if there is any error. And now let's try this out. So I have here some number inside and I click on update counter and you see that it is updated here in our UI. To sum everything up, the inheritor widget is really helpful if you want to share some state to different kind of widgets, to different widgets in the widget tree. And the inherited widget only cares about distributing our state. It cannot update itself. And therefore we have here on top the stateful widget, which will then update every time our inherited widget. And this inherited widget cares then about updating our UI and distributing it to the right widgets. Hello everyone, thank you so much for watching this video. Please make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel here to get the latest news about Flutter. And see you soon, bye.